Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and a very pleasant night to you, my precious pack, and welcome back once more to Vega Conflict, or better known as, well, I've basically done all the jokes at this point, so let's skip all of that. We have a new vessel to take a look at. We now have our version of a buckler. Okay. Along with the buckler, we have new armor and shielding, and one of which I'm going to say we needed towards the beginning of the season, just because of how wonky everything's balanced in the game. Personal opinion, view, and whatnot. But what did we get in the form of the buckler? Well, we got a tank that is basically a switch, but slightly different stats, and it's the same tier. What does it do? Let's see here. Same repair time, 40,000 more hit points, and as you can see, there's a little bug with it. The effective range is bugged out on any of them that you can actually view in a fleet like this. You can see the effective range. And when you build them, you can see the effective range. But for the most part, it's, its stats are basically the exact same as the Switch, for the most part. Weight-wise, health is within a 10,000 point difference, rotation the same, strafe is the same, sector speed is the same, um, 75% and 2%, 75% and 1%. Okay, so the only difference is, this one has a 1% higher defense charge rate over the switch. So the buckler is missing just that little bit. Uh, effective range for... The buckler, if I was actually paying attention, it was like 0 to 2,000, uh, 0 to 4,800, whereas the buckler, where I mean the switch, is 2,000 to 4,800, so it doesn't have a blind spot. Okay. Modifiers. Let's take a look at the boost that it gets for entering. It gains stasis resistance, damage resistance, Increased shield defense and increased movement speed. And what the switch get? Uh, boosts. A larger amount and speed. So it is the more offensive of the two tank classes, and both of which feature spawns at Mark 1. So that's a benefit that you'll most definitely want to take advantage of. Uh, and it has the Aegis field. When in prime shifts and an ally within the maximum weapons range was okay, so it's basically the exact same thing we had on the Ajax. It relocates 50% of the damage, so it just basically helps them out a little bit. And what do we have for the active? We have a missile volley. When two enemies enter the buckler's firing arc, it fires itself of missiles, dealing heavy AoE damage to any enemies caught in the blast area for 15 seconds. Okay, why would that need to be specified? That's that's a little bit odd, but other than that, 200 meter blast radius on each one, 8,000 meter range. It'll take around 2.5 seconds to 2.33 seconds to reach the target. A little bit faster than that, actually. And damage per second is 55. Well, 5,500. Don't mind me. As you can probably tell, I'm tired, which is something that usually happens around the channel. Uh, aside from that, you have the 50% against the Altarians. Okay, so it's about half of what the other is. 40% increased armor value, 25%. of mass 30, 55, 50, 20. 44% off the spawner mass right off the bat. So right away it actually has a heavy reduction to spawner mass. So you could probably fit on the higher level ones at Mark 2, Mark 3 if you don't stuff them on at Mark 1. And it features increased shield regeneration values and whatnot over the switch. It features shield boosts. It, by all intents and purposes, is specifically for tanking damage. It also does increased damage against squadrons. Resistance, it has the same 50% against the three factions that we built up over the course of two tiers, then just kind of kicked them to the curb. Uh, aside from that, there wasn't anything else to note. So, let's go ahead and let's take a look at the upgrades to see what type of fittings it gets. At Mark 1, you have 5 shield slots, 4 armor slots, 2 special slots, 2 weapon slots, you your trigger slot, your cosmetic slot, a single resistor, and then you have your 
hangar slot. And that's about it. Upgrade wise, at Mark 2, you get an additional shield slot. At Mark 3, you get a third weapon slot. At Mark 4, you get an additional armor slot on the back. At Mark 5, you get an additional resistor slot. Okay. And at Elite, you get a an additional armor slot. And the total armor value is 75% increase over the base value. Not bad. It's definitely not going to be doing the damage output that we saw at the switches, but it should be able to at least take a hit due to the prime shift bonuses. 35% off each of those. You mix that with natural damage resistance as well as anything you put in your resistor slots. It should be okay. Naturally, you're going to want something in, else in to do the damage, because unlike the Switch, it's not going to be doing that itself. Now, does it feature anything else? Uh, shield recharge rate is up to 15%. 50% increased damage to squadrons. Remember how I said carriers were underpowered and a little bit weak before? I stand by that point still. They didn't need to add this. Uh, spawner mass, so it goes up from 44 to 55% off. It's already a high value to begin with, so that's not too important in my eyes. Okay. I think that's about it for talking about it. Let's go ahead and let's take a look at the armor and the shielding. Uh, not even going to try and pronounce it right now because I'm too tired for that, but I'll just quickly go over the stats. Now you have two options when you're deciding on which piece of armor you want to use. One is going to boost your shield value, but have a lower health value. And one thing I will point out, they both have the exact same weight, so when you're trying to decide your build, you don't have to worry about the weight. They have the exact same, so if you're going to use level 1 of the opposite, it'll fit regardless. Now, these ones have 30,000 hit points compared to the 24,000, so they have a 6,000 increase. And they also reduce the... Um, they alter, I can't say they reduce, they alter how they affect the phase shift and stuff like that. So, you'll be able to get into phase shift a little bit faster with these, or you'll be able to last a little bit longer because they have the delays being changed by just small amounts. Now, I'm not going to lie, this doesn't really seem like much of anything, because even at 8% multiplied by 6, that's still under half a second of additional time before it begins to charge and drain off. So, yeah, that's a little bit of a... doesn't really matter in my eyes. It's all about this one right here and the hit points. And what I did, as you saw with mine, the prefit that I got, I already refitted it. Two graphene, two of the new one just to reduce the trigger, but naturally I think that going for a maximum trigger reduction would be better. So ultimately, over time, I'll gradually refit everything to have the new armor just to be able to get into phase a little bit more quickly, unless they need the shield energy, in which case then I'll do a mix of the two just to make sure that they have the shielding that they need. Now, talking about the shielding, this one's going to be fairly fun. It is a meta-resistant shield, same as what we had at the lower tier. Okay, here it is. Damage resistance to the three basic damage types. And that's about it. It's basically the same as it was down there. 90% um, defense, so only 10% bleed through, 65% defense across the board. 20,000% energy, well, 20,500 energy. And prime shift values of what you see. Charge cooldown delay, 5 second charge the delay before the drain, 5 second. Alright. Drain rate per second, 2% per second, compared to what? Eh, the exact same, basically. 90% for a uh, 0.9%. 0 0.8%. 0 okay, so that's a different. And these ones are all going to be the same, if I'm not mistaken. 
Yeah, so it has a slightly slower charge rate, but it also has meta resistance, which, again, is something I think we need at the beginning of the season due to the incorporation of the mixed damage types and whatnot like that. We're only allowed six vessels per fleet, so trying to fit them to fight specific portions of the fight would never really work out in the long run because you need all six of the vessels to be engaged in the fight actively or else the fights are going to be prolonged. What do I personally think of all of this? The buckler's a titan, it's a tank, and by all intents and purposes, it'll fulfill the role that I was using with the switch, which was basically just auto, auto, auto. So that's not going to change at all. I'm basically going to have the exact same fitting as these, with the exception that everything will be slowly refitted to be more akin to this in the long run. Now, is this going to be a good thing to replace my switches with? Well, right away, I'm going to have to say no. No, due to the simple fact that, while it would definitely be fitting as a tank, I don't have anything for it to tank for, because I've been using switches and caustics, and if and if there's one thing I can say about either of them, they're just reliable at what they do. The caustics just burn everything down, and then they have weapon disruption at Mark Three, just because of the squadrons. So they... They don't quite need any assistance for this fleet because their shields never go down, so they just feel doesn't really seem all that necessary because none of my ships that I've been using in the past little while, not a single ship has lost any of its shielding to the point where it's a threat of taking direct damage to the hull itself. So in that regard, the overdrive seems to be extremely situational because I'm not using extremely lightly shielded vessels it's kind of pointless, and I can replace every single shield that I do have on them so I can make them even more durable in every single situation. So again, due to the shielding, I don't see myself using the buckler too much, aside from every now and then possibly with the new vessels as we go along. But, for the most part, it's basically just a switch with more durability as the primary focus, less mobility, and a little bit less firepower. But it still has the same ability to spawn. Um, the one benefit is, due to the increased durability, theoretically it would be able to tank longer, for the obvious reason it's more durable. But on top of that, you also have to account for its prime shift bonus, which is the increased damage resistance to all three damage types, which you will be experiencing at Tier 9, and probably into Tier 10 as it comes out. But, for now, this is what we have. Oh, one thing I forgot to check to see was... Yeah. Now that I'm actually looking at it... It does go up, so it goes up to 95% defense. Now, one thing I would like to point out and just remind everybody, it's shielding. It can always be bypassed. So that 5% is fairly mediocre compared to the bypasses that we can put on a large majority of what the buckler will be facing. So, no matter how much durability you get, it's going to matter to what damage resistance types you have under it. Because when people start to bypass, the shielding doesn't mean much of anything because they're going to be doing direct damage to the vessel itself. Now, moving forward, what do I want to do? Well, let's hop back over to the blueprints real quick and give you a hint at what I want to try and do. I want to take a look at the Umbral Faction again from Tier 8. I didn't cover certain vessels, or I didn't cover them in depth enough, or I didn't actually play around with them like I could have and should have, because by all intents and purposes, they actually had some pretty good ones that would be able to help get you up into Tier 9 from Tier 8. And the go-to that I'd recommend due to my auto play style that I've adapted would have to be the Amarok. Because as they do direct damage to a hull, they regenerate ablative, so built-in bypass, you add on bypass weapons, high um, weapon velocities and things like that, or skip the weapon bypass and focus on high damage with extremely high shield dam uh, damage, you'd be able to out-survive them due to your built-in shield bypass, as well as mix that with a bit of something like, say, a bypass carrier to increase that until you can destroy the enemy shielding. Literally just overpower the shielding and you're fine. Now, I wouldn't recommend it for every target, and I'll have to test them and build them up and whatnot, but first I have to find out where the Amarok Blueprint stuff is at. 
No, wait, not the blueprint stuff. The mark upgrade stuff. Give my tired brain a second, it'll remember. But the goal is fairly simple. Take the lower tier titans, test them out in the same auto situations I've been using, and see which targets they can advance into. The primary two that I want to try and get everybody into is the switch and the caustic, because the caustic, by all intents and purposes, is... So far, it hasn't failed me. It's just been amazing in every single role that I've had it in, and it's just... It works. It's as simple as that. It just works. Due to a mixture of the kit it's got, the increased damage values, the... Um, number of weapons it can bring to bear on a single target. It's just a good vessel. Just like the Switch is. While the Switch isn't as powerful, it's got durability on its side as well, so it can go for prolonged farming sessions even without the reusable item tech. And again, my blueprints haven't been changed. They're still using the same fittings. All blueprint tech and nothing else. Now, that's going to be it for now. I'm not going to continue chatting yours off, and I'm not going to edit this because it's actually fairly late, and there's actually something else I want to get into editing, well, recording to edit. <sighs> this is going to be a fun night. <laughs> but I'm going to go ahead and end it here. Go ahead and leave your thoughts below in the comment section about the buckler. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Do you think it's just another stepping stone? Do you think it's not a good stepping stone, or do you have fleets that it'll mix into fairly well to help you with its Aegis Shield to redirect some of the damage to protect you a little bit? Personally, due to the way I've built up, I'm not going to be seeing much use with them, but it's nice to have them as an option on the table. So, be safe out there, my pack. Happy hunting, and as always, I'll see you later.